Hey folks, you're hey folks, hey f hey folks, you're folks, you're hey folks, hey folks, hey folks, you're hey folks, you're. So after that technical difficulty where I got booted off and back in. So welcome to another edition of the Absolute Packer podcast. It's the bye week. And this week we actually have a special guest, uh, Dakota Bernhardt, who is a big uh, APP fan, is going to pop in. Uh, Elliot's not going to be in because it's his wedding anniversary. I don't know what the hell he was doing trying to do this on his wedding anniversary, but he did it anyway. So we're going to talk about, you know, all things Packers, you know, without a game to talk about, so to speak. And we'll go from there. So what's up, guys? Not much, buddy. Not much. Hopefully That's... looking forward to a good game coming up against the Rams. Yeah, that, uh, my goodness. You know, I go through Twitter probably once a day, and I just go through it for Packer stuff. I used to go, I used to like live on Twitter for like all the other stuff, like the political stuff and all that. I'm just like the hell with that. So I basically just go on there for, for Packer stuff. And, and man, there's, it's very negative in Twitter land on Packer stuff. Um, but it's, if you look at some of the stats, like with the Rams and the um, New England coming up, it's, I think Aaron Rodgers is like eight and a half point underdog against mm -hmm. the Rams. That's the biggest uh, line he's ever had in his career. Which that man, that's yikes! That, that kind of tells you everything you need to know about the state of the Packers and how good the Rams are. I mean, I consider Aaron Rodgers the best player in the league, not let alone quarterback. And if he's an eight and a half point dog against the Rams, either that's how bad the Packers are, or that's how good the Rams are. It's something in between. <laughs> and I think it's more about the Rams being good. This is how good the Rams are they pretty much doubled the points that they score per game. So they score roughly 34 points a game. They give up 18 points a game. That's how good wow. this team is. Wow. It's pretty damn good. They kind of, I don't know a whole lot, to be honest, about uh, the other teams in the league um, at this point, but I know the Rams are good. I know uh, the Saints are pretty damn good, and I know the Chiefs. I saw a little bit of them the other day. Good God, the Chiefs, that Mahomes quarterback that they got, he's like Aaron Rodgers 2.0. But... Um, the the Rams on some level they seem to remind me a little bit of the Packers in uh, 2011 when they were just nuking everybody but they didn't have a good defense they had all world offense and the off the defense is what let them down so Jeremy if you know more about the stats of the the Rams or even New England I mean this next five game stretch they could easily easily be one and four in my opinion it, it's very possible. Um... To, to give you some uh, to give you some perspective, uh, their offense is number one in the league. Um, right. They have they average four hundred forty five yards per game mm. uh, total, two hundred ninety two through the air, one hundred fifty three on the ground, and then like I said, they average just under thirty four points per game per off on offense. That is um, defensively. I think they went into the season with a lot of high hopes, with a lot of expectations, and they've they've kind of had a letdown. But it hasn't been because of personnel issues. It's been mostly from injuries. Uh, yep. uh, Akib Talib, who they acquired in the offseason uh, from Denver, the all-pro cornerback, he's been hurt with an ankle injury. Marcus Peters just came back, and I think he's um, on the injury report, but it sounds like he's going to practice and play this weekend. Um, Ex-Packer, Sam Shields. Um, oh, I saw that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. He has stepped in and uh, done a decent job. Um, I can't remember what team it was in the past three weeks that lit him up pretty good. But uh, um, defensively, also, they got Nadamika Sue, who they picked up in the offseason, uh, defensive lineman. And then they also have Aaron Donald, who's probably the, the best defensive lineman in the league. Um, mm. So, I mean, talent-wise, you know, they're starting 22. I mean, <laughs> there's not too many teams that can touch them. And yeah, they're pretty team, stacked. Jesus. They're stacked across the board. They have three receivers that have over 30 receptions thus far, uh, and Cooper, Co Cooper Cup, uh, Robert Woods, and uh, Brandon Cooks, who they acquired from New England in the offseason. So, I mean, they're stacked. Uh, Todd Gurley at running back. Um, <laughs> and this team does it all with a 50-50 balance. I just looked at the stats today, and I know last week I reported they were around 55-45, 
but right now they're about 50 50 where they're passing the ball and running the ball and they're dynamic in both ways so they present a huge challenge to us uh, i think more so on the defensive side of it because uh, they have three receivers that uh, can get open and play anywhere on the field and they have a running game that we haven't been able to stop a, a good running attack thus far, uh, so far this year. No. Uh, so it's going to be a huge challenge for us because there's not one point of that team where we can, you know, say we can we can um, contain them. I mean, we're just going to have to hope that we score over 40 points a game. I think it's going to be a high scoring game, and whoever has a last possession is going to be the team that hopefully comes out on top, and hopefully that's us. But that's the kind of game that we're in for, where it's just going to be going up and down the field, and nobody's going to stop each other. Is there any hope that uh, we we give up less than thirty five points? I mean, I I I don't see it happening. Um, I think they at least score thirty, if not not thirty five. I would Packers. I, I would agree with you, Dakota. I I don't see this. I, I want to see what the over under is. It's got to be like eighty points or seventy <laughs> to eighty points, right? You know? But I mean, if if the Rams score under thirty points. <laughs> I, I will be tickled pink. I don't see that happening. Um, and, and us, are we going to score 30 points? I think the likelihood of us not scoring more than 30 points is greater than the Rams not right. scoring. So That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of – that's kind of the whole ball game, and and, and to throw comparisons out there too, uh, offensively and defensively, we're right in the middle of the pack um, on offense – we're 13th in the league. We average 24 points a game. We average giving up 24 points a game. So we're pretty much neck and neck there. Uh, our defense actually statistically has, has been dynamic and, and, and stellar compared to years past in the Don Capers era. Um, and I also saw something on ESPN today where we are f- sixth in the league in pressure uh, percentages. And what that wow. means is the percentage of dropbacks where the defense actually applies pressure to the quarterback. We're at 30 two percent so pretty much roughly one out of every three downs we're getting somebody near the quarterback which actually pretty surprising it yeah. is isn't it i mean that, i that, bet that, you that, a lot of that to be honest though is they're they're using a lot of blitzes i bet you we're getting um pressure on either safety blitzes or corner blitzes or where right. they're sending more than just the front and that's where the stats can kind of lie because i i do see us sometimes when we're we are pressuring a guy and then when you see that that's when the quarterback you know, if you're applying all that applying all that pressure, you don't have that much in the secondary. That's when every <laughs> I hate to say it, but every time when I see an opposing quarterback drop back and he's throwing, he looks like he's going to heave a pass over thirty yards. That sucker's going to get completed. <laughs> I over can't just, tell Bryce. <laughs> I, yeah, I just I hate it whenever I see that. But man, just going. I forgot. So Sam Shields is still in the league. Holy moly! Yep. Yeah, they uh, the Rams picked him up this off season to be the kind of like their nickel dime guy, and he was um, the guy who had a ton of concussions and it basically. I thought he'd be done after that. I'm really surprised he's still playing. Yeah. And actually, week one he suffered another concussion. Are you wow. serious? Yeah, and he was out for I don't remember exactly how long, but yeah, I, it's. I bet he's had like five concussions. Did he miss a whole season for us due to concussion? Yeah, they shot him down right. here. I thought. Yeah. yeah, they they did. And and pretty much when you suffer one concussion, it pretty much opens a gauntlet for more and more yeah. concussions and more. Right. Damn, concussions damn too. opening. Yeah. And I remember I, I hate to, to, you know, harken back to days, though, but his rookie year, I think he was undrafted out of Miami in Super Bowl year. That guy, he could fly, though. Holy mm-hmm. man, he wasn't the tallest guy, but he had some serious speed. Mm-hmm. It's fun to watch. Sucks what and, happened to him. And the scary thing about him was I think he only played defensive back for maybe one or two years at Miami. I he think it might have been one. Receiver, wasn't he? he yeah. Was a re- yeah. Think, yep. That's why he was undrafted because he only played one year, I believe, at uh, right. cornerback. But, man, he was fun to watch, no doubt. Sure was. So it's interesting that he's back in the league. Good good for him. Um, I guess, Dakota, just a question for you in overall. What do you, what do you think of the team – on the whole, from what you've seen this year collectively, I mean, is it about what you thought? Way lower expectations, or just I don't know. I'm just curious what you think. Uh, t- to be honest, kind of what I I thought. Honestly, I think uh, ten and six record this year is is best case scenario if if healthy. Um, just not a lot of top tier talent on really either side of the ball. You know, we still have 
McCarthy, he kind of holds us back, obviously, <laughs> I, I a little bit. I think so, um, yeah, I hear you. I, I see. I hear you. I mean, I, I was really worried about the receivers coming into this year. Um, I don't have a lot of faith left in Randall Cobb uh, just due to injuries. Hasn't really been that productive. Um, and Jernal Allison stepped up a little bit, but, you know, I was kind of concerned he was our third receiver. Um, I think offense will get it together, though. Um, Aaron Jones, the rookie receivers, Devontae Adams, I think they'll – be all right but uh defensively um i don't even know where you start to be honest a lot of needs yeah what's interesting from my perspective is i didn't really have a baseline because i I was telling these guys that like i was literally waking up out of a coma trying to figure out what the hell this team was going to be and i couldn't remember a lot of it so it was like i did see that a lot of the pundits a lot of them had the packers as number one I swear. I'm surprised. Like, Everyone had him going I cannot, to the Super oh Bowl. My, yeah, and I'm like, and when <laughs> like, I saw the roster, I'm going, that, that's just the power of Aaron Rodgers. If, right. I Look, I, I don't know what you guys think, but I'm just going to lay it out there. I mean, if this team does not have Aaron Rodgers, I think they'd be in the hunt for the number one pick. It's entirely possible. Yeah, well, they, would, they just, won't be 8-8. Eight and eight. They couldn't even get to that. I, they'd probably be under that because they just, right. like you said, they don't have a lot of dynamic players on either side of the ball. Um, when you when you're relying on guys like I mean, Geronimo Allison, he's undrafted, isn't he? And um, undrafted, right? And so their receiving core is taking taking a hit. Um, is it Reggie Gilbert? Is that the guy I'm thinking of that they were thinking was going to make like big strides, and he's like taking a step back, but he's undrafted. It's just they rely on all this talent to go way over its head. I think um, both uh, are both starting guards undrafted as well. Mm-hmm. I think at least one of them is. Kentrell Bryce is undrafted. I mean, I, I don't know. I've never seen a team, you know, have so many undrafted players start. It's it's kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah, and you could say it's kind of like, are they doing like a, a mini rebuild? But then I look at it and I go, this is what Ted Thompson would fucking do every year anyway. So Gudikins, from what I'd see, is Ted 2.0. Um, and I think, to me, honestly, what makes it kind of different, say you have an, if you have a decent quarterback, that's one thing. But if you have an all-world quarterback, I mean, all-world, all-time, and he's, I wouldn't say Rodgers in the twilight of his career, but he's on the back nine, as they say, right? You right. Better, you, I mean, you're wasting stuff. You're just wasting it if you're not going to build up stuff around him. Now, do you want to just, you know, go all in and then, you know, after a while you just absolutely suck because you, you gave up a bunch of... Uh, draft picks for immediate needs yeah that's one thing but i just don't understand why the team during the last part um part of ted's uh tenures being gm and even with gutekunst i'm seeing the the moves they make or the lack of moves they make is is really baffling you know i do i get it on some level yeah i guess because they gave Aaron Rodgers a huge contract but um i mean the trades they make and the the off-season moves they make and stuff like that it's 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 kind of baffling, you know. Even the the draft classes, um, if you go back and look at them, a lot of those guys haven't haven't panned out, or they're not even on the team anymore. So, I mean, terrible drafting is really caught up. Yeah. Definitely o- over evaluation. I think uh, Ted Thompson was uh, had a penchant for over evaluating and over drafting guys, and then when you draft guys in the second and third rounds, you're expecting the world from them, and when they let you down, like Richard Rodgers, for example, coming off the top of my head. That one hurts, you know. Yeah. Right. Is is he in the league anymore? Uh I mean he had sure hands, but boy, was he slow, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was is my he... thoughts exactly. I think he's like two hundred and seventy pounds. He couldn't get any separation on anybody. Oh, I'm sorry. He's with Philadelphia, but he's That's been what, inactive. Yeah. He's been inactive, I think, for pretty much every game that I've <laughs> I've seen. Yeah, and who is I, I read about some others. They had was it Vince Beagle? They drafted him, and he's out of yeah, the league. Yeah, not a good. You pick. think he's out of the league already? Might be on the Saints practice squad. Last I heard, but yep, yeah, there've yep. been a lot of hit, or a lot of misses, so to speak. And I, you wonder if Ted was just trying to find extreme value, and you know they knew they were going to have to pay Rogers a lot of money, but at the same time, it's it's. It's baffling. It's just the only way I can put it because any chance you could get to better the team, you know, in the offseason trades, he just wouldn't do it, period, end of story. How many times did they, they draft the uh, the best player left on the draft board? We never drafted the top guy. We'd always look for, you know, a guy that we'd draft a safety, put him at corner. You know, oh, God, that's really a good point. any sense. Yeah, um, like who was the last guy? Demarius Randall. 
Oh man, um, he played corner, but he played. Sa- I heard that he's he's somewhere now and he's playing safety and he's doing okay. And it's like right for Cleaver. Well, hey, that makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah. So those are yeah baffling moves too. Um, you know who's the other guy who got away that I I barely remember, but I know he was pretty good. Was Micah Hyde? He's a uh, he's playing really well, isn't he? Yeah, yes, plays free yeah. safety for the Bills. I think we played him more at a slot corner, and uh, he just didn't do as well. Uh, goes to the he Bills. He played some free safety, didn't free he? Free safety. I think a little bit. I think he's more slot corner for us. Stupid. It's like we groom these guys to just leave, you know? Right. <laughs> Best way I can put well, it. But... And I, I, I think I would, I would take point or I would take uh, emphasis into your point about, you know, value over everything else. If you're trying to keep Aaron Rodgers here, but think about how many years we've had Aaron Rodgers under contract since 2013. Mm -hmm. That's when we signed him to at the time, which was the largest contract in NFL history for a quarterback. We had him under contract for that long. So the value thing doesn't make any sense to me because of the fact you had value in the fact that you were, you know, Beyond his 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 contract year of 2013, he wasn't the highest paid quarterback in the league. Mm. 2000 starting in 2014, and we had a pretty decent team then. But then after that, I mean, there's just no excuse. I I've lived under this for the, my whole life. There's no excuse to not have enough depth on your team because there's going to be time and place when that depth is going to come back and it's going to help you out in the long run, just like it did in 2010 when we won the Super Bowl. How no much doubt depth they, had fantastic, that they had fantastic depth. Holy cow. That's a good point. Right. So there, there's no such thing as having enough depth. And like the Saints, let's take the Saints, for example. They go out today and they trade for Eli Apple, uh, defensive back from the Giants, who um, was a former first-round draft pick. They had a need in the in the secondary in at cornerback, and they went out and made a move. They traded a fourth round draft pick for him. This is a proven talent that you're trading a fourth round draft pick for. And the fourth rounder, it's either going to be you know a good player or he's going to be a fringe guy. You know, it's really not mm-hmm. a lot of in betweens or exceeding or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you're, you're getting a proven talent um, to strengthen your team. And the saints have been doing that this whole off season. And during, and during this, the season, they have been doing that. So I look at them as like, you know, put them on a pedestal and how you build team strength and how you build, uh, um, good team depth. And they're just, they're doing everything they possibly can to, to succeed where I think the Packers are very, just complacent. They're very happy with what they got and they're just going to ride it out. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I've, away. I've often said that you know my brother who left a, apparently a really great voicemail for us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going back and forth with him, and he always nags on me. He says not everybody can be the Patriots, and I said, yeah, I get that. But you know, the the beauty of like a team like the Patriots is that you know they're not built to compete; they're built to win. Exactly. The Packers, the Packers are built to compete. They're not built to win. And they would argue, right. well, we're built to win because we have Aaron Rodgers. And I would say, look at the dearth of talent around him, though. You can't have – he can't carry everything. And, you know, I start to look at McCarthy, too, and I go – I hear some of his nonsense he, he spouts about during the self-scout and all that. It's like, we need to run the ball more. It's like, no shit. And you have – Why don't you start Aaron, doing it? <laughs> Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, who is just like – you look at some of his stats – the guys barely run the ball and he's like damn near top 10 in a lot of these running back stats. And it's just like, he's begging to be really um, unleashed. And what's taken so long, I couldn't tell you. Um, and McCarthy, I mean, Jeremy, you and I have gone on it for a long time. I think, you know, his scheme is archaic. It's predictable and he's stubborn and, you know, I don't know what else you can say because it looks like some of these corners, they know the routes before they even, you know, they're running the routes before the receivers are because he has, there's very little creativity and he's, he's running the beach man scheme. And he's done that for the better part of when he's been here. Now, when he had the talent, think like 2010, 2011, right. when you got the Greg Jennings, you got Finley, you got Donald driver, you got Jordy Nelson, you got James Jones. I mean, pick your poison. Right. But when you got, I hate to say it, but when you got a, a dearth or junk around there, um, you got to skein some guys open. And the last game, I was happy to see him do that bunch formation stuff and even some like naked bootleg wheel route stuff. I was like, holy, this cow, this is great. And he did that on the first drive and then just 
everything went back to normal after that, and I don't understand that. Okay, I'm going to watch the the Patriots. Uh, Tom Brady barely throws the ball down the field. It's these five yard throws, dink a dunk, dink five, six, seven yards every every down to keep the chains moving. Um, Packers, it's kind of the run the 15 yard route down the field and hopefully you get open. If you don't, Rodgers will run around and hopefully make a yep. miracle. Yep, I agree with that. I'm going to role play here. I'm going to be Mike McCarthy. I'm going to rebut. I'm going to uh, come back to your response, uh, Andy. Mm. Um, I'm going to I'm going to call uh, bullshit on this. Uh, <laughs> we are very fortunate. I think we drop back and throw the football as well as anybody ever. Period. End of story. Well, I could see why you would think that. Um, <laughs> as a stubborn <laughs> sob, but. Rodgers is on one and a half legs. That's not helping. You know, he's thir- look at he's 34. He's not 28. Um, he's on, like I said, he's got an injured leg and he's not playing very well right now. Part of that could be a variety of things. I think you said, Jeremy, he's not practicing a whole lot either because he's injured. When you're not practicing, you're not getting a lot of continuity. And there's a ton of young guys out there. Um, all that stuff added up. It's It's just not working. Now, I would love to see this team come out of the, the bye and just say, fuck it, we're going to run no huddle and just see what this does. Yeah. I would love to yeah. see that. And just I think see, the offense I would say has make a, a good stop. chance at getting it going. Um, I mean, if you look at the, the players they do have, I mean, if you get Aaron Jones going a little bit more, the, the receivers deadly. we have, I mean, they're, they're pretty fast guys. Get Devontae Adams going and, and, you know, they got Jimmy Graham going. Um, I think the offense could turn it around. It's just a couple simple things. You just got to do it. Execution. Yeah. Execution. That's it. That's another <laughs> thing that's killing them right now. Yeah, it is. And penalties are sloppy as hell. They are sloppy oh. right now. Um, not helping them. But if they could, if they could get Aaron Jones, say he becomes their bell cow and he just he really starts, and they give him the ball more. Could you? I mean, this offense with Aaron Rodgers could be really dynamic if they have the threat of the run and the pass near fifty fifty. I mean, and the guy who's running the ball is can really tear one off. That would make this offense truly dynamic. Well, this, I don't know if, you, if. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Dakota. Um, at this point, do you guys even think it's it's worth handing Montgomery the ball as as running back? I, I haven't really seen a whole lot out of him with his able to run the ball this year. Yeah, he's he's. You know what? I apologize because I don't remember much about him being in a coma. <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> I always can go back to that, right? Um, yeah, he's right. Like a, he's he's like a tweener player. He seems like a to me. He's like he's like kind of a running back, kind of a, a wide receiver, but you know, he's just, he's not one of either. You know what I mean? So he's he's like this Swiss Army knife type player. But to me, in the NFL, if you're not a specialist at something, if you're kind of like this, you know, jack of all trades but master of none, you're in deep shit. Right. It seems to me in the NFL. Um, and the Packers have a lot of those kind of players. They've had a lot of those kind of players that, oh, we want him to be versatile and do this, that, or the other. Well, it just doesn't work that way. You know, not in today's dynamic, you know, the way the offenses work, speed, the, the you know, all that stuff. Um, so a guy like Montgomery, he may be, he's a tweener. I think that's that's almost like the death of a player if you're a tweener. Right, you almost have to master both things. I mean, look at Le'Veon Bell or Todd Gurley. I mean, they're phenomenal running and receiving. You know, they're not half ass at, at both. I just yeah. don't think it makes it. He's a yeah. he's a wannabe Darren Sproles in my eyes. I think he, he could do everything. <laughs> he could do everything. He can return kicks. He can play running back. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, and he's hurt all the time. So. Right. He's not as talented as Darren Sproles is, but I look at him as a poor man, Darren, in that he's trying to duplicate everything that Darren has done in his career. Um, you know, a jack of and all. And he's no Darren done. Sproles, Jesus Christ. If they, if, if the Packers think of Montgomery as Darren Sproles, uh, they're, I don't know, <laughs> they're high on something. That's all I can say. But I could see Ted in a meeting saying, here's our Darren Sproles and McCarthy going, I don't think so. And Ted going, tough shit, take him and use him like this. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I see let, what you're saying, but that's let's just see insane. let's see how they come out of the buy now because I don't know if you've you've listened to McCarthy's press conference today and my little statement before where I was trying to role play Mike that he actually said that about the offense he actually said that about the passing wow. um, 
<laughs> word for word, and I better uh, you know give him recognition for that. But um, <laughs> otherwise, you know, whatever. He's got a copyright, <laughs> right? Um, Randall Cobb, Geronimo Allison, all practiced today. Uh, they came back, but um, in the press conference, he talked about the biggest thing that came out of the, the bye week and what they did in the bye week is they did a self reflect. And what they did is they, they gave the defense um, the task of scouting the offense and the offense of scouting the task, scouting the defense. And they just did a little self analysis, a little, you know, uh, in-house uh, scouting thing and came out of it with the conclusion that they need to give the ball more to Aaron Jones. Oh, really? So, That's what it took. And other news, and other news, water's wet. Water's wet, right. <laughs> I mean, wow. Jesus H. Christ. McCarthy is a stubborn, stubborn son of a That's bitch. That's the thing. If, if everyone says this is what you need to do to win, he'll try every resort other than that, you know, and try and prove you wrong. He's a very, I mean, he's a good coach. I don't think he's a great coach. I think he's a good coach, but he's a very right. unique kind of guy um i mean winning a super bowl in green bay gives you basically life tenure let's just face it if he <laughs> if he had won that super bowl he'd be gone you know what i mean oh yeah oh he'd be gone um so that that definitely helps in the 15 and 1 season you know kind of said oh he can do all this that and the other but he he needs a shitload of talent for his offense to work that's kind of what the conclusion i've come with right is if, if you don't have a ton of talent he he won't he won't scheme. He'll just, you know, he'll keep butting his head against the wall, you know, trying to make something else happen. I think that's maybe that's what Rogers and him have kind of butted heads over is maybe Aaron Rodgers realizes that, hey, you know, this is this is the way it's going to be, whether it's Ted or Gutekunst. Um, we're not going to have Greg Jennings. We're not going to have Finley. We're not going to have, um, you know, James Jones. We're not going to have, you know, basically four wide receivers that can kill you, Jordy Nelson, all in their prime. Um, we're going to have, a lot of guys, Jags, as I say, just a guy. Mm -hmm. um, and McCarthy maybe looks at it one way and Rodgers looks at it the other. And Rodgers might be begging for scheme and deception. And McCarthy's just like, nope, my way's worked. We're going to keep doing it that way. I mean, who knows? Let me, let me throw this past both of you guys, and I want, I want both of your responses to this. So right now the Packers are passing the ball roughly 70% of the time, 30% running. Mm-hmm. Now, we just talked about how great Aaron Rodgers is, and I think we've talked about that since I've been on this podcast. Uh, do you think that then that's a good proportion that you just give the ball to the best player in the league uh, if if you feel like he is going to be the guy that's going to get you to the promised land? Do you feel like that is the best way to do it by giving him the ball or having him pass the ball 70% of the time? Uh, do you think that leads to success? And do you think Mac McCarthy is correct in that analysis? I'll tell you this. Um, in 2011, yeah. Hell yeah, 70-30. In 2018, that needs to be 60-40, if not closer to 50-50. It's based on what you got out there. And mm -hmm. also based on an untapped find in Aaron Jones. I mean... Like I said, every time that guy touches the ball, he rips off five yards. You know, he he's chugging for yards more and more. Um, and the thing with Aaron Rodgers, too, I mean, the offensive line, I'm trying to think of, I keep going back to 2011, but the offensive line that they had in 2011 was pretty damn good, too. Um, and I say that because, Jeremy, you and I have talked about it. I mean, the offensive line the Packers have now, the right side is a disaster. Um you got Belaga way past his prime, always hurt. And then I can't remember the guard. Who's the, the right guard? Right now um, it's Byron Bell. And he's he's in there because of injuries too, I imagine. But yep. the right side of the line, it's like every time Rodgers takes a snap, he is getting pressured immediately off the right side of that line. So it's breaking up the whole frickin' play and all the timing. Uh, the Packers have to either understand that and bring some help in there or they got to do something different. I think McCarthy is still looking at, you know, Everybody on the line, if they do their job, we're going to have a good chance at, you know, having this, that, or the other. But you see Rodgers, he's rolling out of the pocket immediately because he's got pressure immediately. He can't sit in the pocket. If he could, maybe he would have better play design. But if he's rushing out of the, you know, one second after the snap because the whole right side, right side broke down, I can see why he's missing some of these, quote, easy throws because timing gets off. You know? Yeah. What do you think, Dakota? 
Um, I think if you, you look at it, I think this year he's completing, what, 61% of his passes. Um, in uh, 2011, I think he was completing closer to, to 70%. Which um, is not very not very effective or, or efficient, yeah. I guess, is the word I'm looking for. I think a, a good running game, you get that going, and then Rodgers is completing closer to 70% of his passes. Um, play action passes more. Oh, my available. God, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just think that's the way to go. Um, the percentages just kind of show – you know, where we're at right now, it's not very good. I mean, 60% of your passes completed is it, it's under average as far as nowadays go. Yeah. yeah. And he's, he's agree. missing some, he has missed some really, you know, what I call easy throws, just little dump offs. And when I've seen some of the all 22 film and some of these guys on Twitter are showing, I mean, he still is in love with the bomb, right? He wants to throw something oh, yeah. 20 yards and over and they'll show something where like Jimmy Graham will be running like a flat route and he's nine yards, you know, it's first and 10, but he's nine yards wide stinking open. Nobody within 10 yards of him. And Rogers isn't even looking at him because he doesn't want, I don't know if that's McCarthy or that's Rogers or both or whatever, but it's like, I did hear that actually, that uh, people are uh, trying to say that the, the schemes on offense are a little bit better, but uh, uh, Rogers is looking for the deep all the time. I mean, I don't know if it's true or not, but it could be a little both, but I have seen a fair amount where like somebody will be wide open. You know, there was one guy who was wide open. Uh, they were in the they were in the red zone. It was like uh, what was it? Uh, maybe in like the eighteen yard line or something. And one guy snuck it in the flat and went to the right, and he was only five yards across the line of scrimmage. But he would have scored a touchdown. He was that wide open. There's nobody over there. He wasn't even looking at the guy, and that's odd, you know, because he was looking for the long pass, so to speak, and that. Again, I don't know if that's on Rodgers or if that's, you know, McCarthy or both, but he's got to start. If you're an NFL quarterback and you're missing guys who are wide open, it's not a good look. And if you're Aaron Rodgers, it's odd, you know. I think if there's one game that would tell you the whole picture, it's the Detroit game. Uh, I can count on two hands how many times, because I went back, watched that game uh, three times. Why did you do that? (laughs) <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a gun for punishment, but also too, I I want to be able to sound educated when I talk about it. But <laughs> that's my most important thing. But I mean, when there was there was one instance where uh, Rogers was rolling out to his right. Uh, I think it was in the third quarter, or maybe the, the late uh, end of the second quarter, um, and he threw a pass to Jamal Williams, and he threw it over his head, incomplete. If you go back and watch that play, Devonte Adams ran a crossing route. From the slot, from the left Probably slot. Just wide open. And he was wide open. And if he would have hit him, it would have been a touchdown because the closest defender was actually on Jamal Williams. Like that's how skewed the, the defense was on, on the field. They were all to the left. They were crowding the left because they had Randall Cobb and they had uh, I think it was Marquez Valdez Scantling uh, running go routes towards the the uh, the middle and the uh, corner of the left corner of the end zone. So, uh, if you go back to the Detroit game, you will see multiple multiple times when receivers were wide open, 10, 15 yards down the field, and he did he either didn't see them or he didn't want to take the chance. And it's uh, to me, it's it's not something where it was taking a chance. These guys were wide open. It was an automatic first down, you know. Yeah. So, um, and then I think I attributed that to uh, the lack of practice, um, you know, earlier on here. Um, he's going to start practicing a lot more here as we go along. It sounds like he's starting to uh, get training today, and then tomorrow he's supposed to uh, hopefully hit the practice field. Um, and he hasn't practiced on Wednesdays uh, since he had his knee injury, so that's a huge development that he's going to hopefully start practicing tomorrow, and. I think with that practice time, that's going to help him see the field better because he's going to go through the rhythm and he's going to feel it out. And and once he gets to the game time, he's all he's in a zone, you know. And I think that's just the problem right now is he's not in that zone because he's he's just not making the throws in practice. He's not practice makes perfect. It really truly does. Even for and he's not on. practicing right. much shit. That's true. He's not. He's really not practicing a whole lot. It's hurting him. Um. And Jimmy Graham, man, that guy should be a fucking beast in the red zone, and he's like nothing and i think they're not even it almost appears that they're not even trying to get him involved or maybe rogers and looking at his way or i don't know but i can't really say i'm surprised though um i had high hopes on martellus bennett as well and i see what we did with him when he was <laughs> no, playing Lord. i just couldn't figure out how you know couldn't give him the ball granted you know he was injured but still yeah 
go back and watch um, any red zone opportunity the Packers have. Uh, defense, they're horrific this year in the red zone. They got to be. They're fifty. They're fifty percent. They're fifty percent. Wow. But watch what teams do to Jimmy Graham. I mean, they are uh, they they um, over and top. I mean, they're they're or excuse me under and top. They have a guy underneath. They have a guy over the top. They don't allow Jimmy Graham to beat them in the red zone. And I've I've even seen um, mm-hmm. against San Francisco, they had three guys on them at one time. So teams wow. know when the Packers get into the red zone. They're not going to let Jimmy Graham beat them. Everybody else has to, and they have that right. ability. Devonte Adams does have that ability. He has six touchdowns thus far. So, you know the the ability to get Jimmy Graham incorporated in the into the red zone is not from lack of trying. It's from the defenders and defense <clears throat> scheming so that they don't allow Jimmy to beat them. Yeah, That's and nice. I guess nobody else can. Yeah. You know, come up and take take up the slack or whatever. They're minus the minus Devonte. I mean, the other. I don't. I mean, I don't see Randall Cobb ever getting any separation in the red zone. Geronimo, he, You know, he's he's big, tall. He could use his body, but you know, he's not very quick either. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I it, I used to apparently. I didn't remember this because my poor my memory lapses after this E. coli thing. But Small Jeremy episode. said. Yeah, Jeremy used to say, he goes, Andy, you used to call Devontae Adams a jag all the time. And I will. And Geronimo. On... Well, Geronimo, <laughs> Geronimo is a jag. I'm sorry. But <laughs> but Devontae Adams, I will stand correct. That guy looks like the real deal. I mean, he looks like it, it was his third year. Yes. yes. And he looks like he's really coming on. You know, you got Aaron Rodgers throwing to you, no doubt. But I seen some of the moves and some of the, you know, the quick, uh, like what do you call them? The quick uh, foot plants and stuff like that, and just the quick motion stuff. He's looking like a top ten wide receiver. I think so, he's more talented than uh, any of the receivers we've had during Rodgers' era. I think he's even more talented than uh, Greg Jennings or even Jordy Nelson in his prime. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Greg nice. Jennings. I will say Greg Jennings in his prime was a freaking. He was not the fastest. He was, but he was like the smoothest that you would he ever see. He was pretty see. smooth. Yeah. He was. When he would catch touchdowns, he'd catch bombs and he'd be wide open because he would just destroy guys on on his quick, nimble like cuts and stuff, you know. And they knew he was going to get them, but but they also had, you know, at that time they had um, Jordy Nelson coming to that Donald Driver, they had uh, James yeah. Jones, and they had Jermichael Finley. So it was kind of pick your poison. But man, I remember Greg Jennings in his heyday was just he was so fun to watch. But um, I would say, yeah, I mean, Devontae Adams is more. Uh, athletic i think his skill set i mean i don't really think there's any limit to what he can do moving forward he's caught he that touchdown pass he caught against the 49ers where um rogers slipped it in like right over that defender's head and he snagged it that was a thing of beauty Mm -hmm. holy cow i mean not an easy not an easy pass no doubt but not an easy catch at all he made it look real smooth so right um, Devontae adams is looking real good and he's Uh, i mean he's really the only receiver when you think about it I'll say this about Geronimo Allison, uh, and, and you can find this uh, across many spectrums because a lot of people say this, but he has football speed. And what I mean by that is when he came out of college, I think he ran like a 4.65, which in the NFL tight, end, <laughs> tight ends are supposed to run 4.65. So, uh, you know, is his, his uh, you know, zero to 40 or his, you know, if he, t- if he takes off from the end zone from the zero and he goes to the 40 yard line, you know, does that really make a difference? But it does over overall, but he just has the ability. He has that football speed uh, to make up for that shortcoming in his agility and his speed. And I think that's where he excels. Uh, he just he makes more out of what God gave him. You know, I, he truly that does. was what Greg Jennings did too. Maybe I mean he wasn't quite as you know I'll say slow as uh, Geronimo Allison, but the, you're right. That football speed, smooth as all hell. They understand routes, they understand angles, and they can they can cut on a dime and stuff like that. And those guys are fun to watch. You know, don't get me wrong. They, I, could you imagine if Aaron Rodgers had Antonio Brown or like wow. uh, Julio Jones? He's never had a burner. You know, he's never had a guy who could just fly. Not a true field. burner, no. No, I mean he's had guys who have been pretty good. Um, we had we had Jeff Janus. We'd send on the Hail Mary every once in a while. That was about it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! They kept that guy. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess that, that worked against Arizona in the playoffs. Yeah, that's mm. true. <laughs> <laughs> don't 
the one game that he his career game. Do you remember that game, Andy? Oh, I actually do remember a little bit of that. They and then um, it was like they biffed it. Oh, they go ahead. biffed it. Yeah, he was in the okay. I do remember that Rodgers was in the end zone, and it was fourth down, and he threw a bomb to Janice, and he was open, and then he threw a hail mary to him, and then I want to say on like right away in the uh, overtime. Like what happened in overtime? Right away, the Packers lost again. Oh, I know what happened. First play, right? First play to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Uh, he was, he was and, sitting wide open on the left hand side of the field, and there defense were collapsed guys. again. Yes, exactly. They had an all out blitz. Uh, the Packers blitzed. I don't remember how many guys, but it was at least six guys, mm-hmm. and they just had a jailhouse blitz, and it, and it caught the Packers on a really bad play to blitz because he was just wide open. That's the Packers are. God, you talk about, te- I mean, they've been to every time they get to overtime, like they're going to lose. They're going to lose. They're going <laughs> to, defense is going to botch something. But I actually do remember a little bit of that game, not a ton. I remember some of the, uh, the Jan, I remember the, the two Janice plays. I don't really remember thing, anything past that, to be honest. Um, the, I don't, as you know, I don't remember almost any of the, uh, the Atlanta, um, NFC championship game. Um, I don't remember any game from last year. I don't remember. I don't remember a lot. It sucks in a way, but um, in a way, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It's just the best way I can describe it is um, it's kind of creepy. At first, it was frustrating when I when I I was like, God, why can't I remember this? Why can't I remember that? And now it's just kind of it's just creepy because you you know it's there, you know what happened, you've seen pictures and video, but it's not in your head. It's just this weird phenomenon that doesn't seem to make sense, but Sure enough, you know the memories aren't there. It's it's weird. It's the only thing I can <laughs> really say about it. I mean, when I got out, this is now we're just kind of getting into some of these other stories, but I think they're good for even Dakota to hear. Is um, Jeremy? I didn't remember who you were. Mm-hmm. Wow, I had no idea who he was. Um, because I got some messages when I got back into my phone. I saw messages. I uh, I'm in a band, and the uh, guitar player's name is Jeremy, and he was sending some messages back and forth about something, and I said. I'm in a podcast with the with my guitar player. That's what I thought. I thought that Jeremy was the same Jeremy. Wow. And I saw I saw yeah, I saw pictures of Jeremy and he like kind of I kind of remembered him, but not much. Um I didn't know how we met. I had to we met for coffee was it about 3 weeks ago or so? I want to yeah. say it was Elliot and Jeremy just to kind of it was just to kind of like you know, kind of reintroduce some stuff. I can, so I could let them know where I was at. And it, it was, it was kind of odd. It was good though, but I couldn't remember where we met. I couldn't remember like how we met and some of it's come back. I, I, I reckon, I remember a decent stuff um, now, Jeremy, but it was weird at first. I, I didn't know who, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know what was going on. It was weird. It's, no big, it's no big deal. That's been my life with women. So. <laughs> <laughs> But like we went to, I saw some pictures and some posts. I think it was on Facebook. We went to a Packers preseason. I don't know if it was a, was it or no? It was like a practice, wasn't it? Training camp, training camp, training like camp practice. Seventh training camp, training yeah, camp. And there's all these pictures, and there's pictures of me and Jeremy and Elliot, and I didn't remember any of that event, none of it. Um, it's just weird. So you know, some of the stuffs come back, but a lot of it is just plain gone. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, weird, but, um, enough about that stuff. It's Let me every ask, now and then hits. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, no, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to, I was going to ask Dakota, um, you know, as we're talking about the receivers, um, what is, what is your take Dakota on, on the rookies, Equinemius St. Brown, uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling and Jamon Moore. You know, I think my, minus Jamon Moore, I don't know, he's been kind of a disappointment. I think we can all agree on that. But, you know, I think the other two, um, I think if you give them some time, you know, their second and third year, and I think they could actually really produce in the offense. Um, I mean, they, they're your prototypical, bigger, faster, wide receivers nowadays. Um, I'm kind of excited about them and um, how fast they actually did catch on. I mean, if you look in the past, I mean, it, some guys in our offense never did catch on. I mean, Trevor Davis being one, never could get on the field. Um, I mean, these two guys, you know, they've produced somewhat. So I think it's exciting. Trevor yeah. Davis, holy cow, there's a name that I kind of remember. But what's he was our he, burner that never turned out. Is, is he on the? <laughs> is he on the team? He's on the IR right now, but he's actually 
uh, him and Jay Kumaro, they were both put on the IR to start the season off. They're right now the Packers are deciding whether to bring one of those two back onto the active roster because they were put on the temporary IR, which is pretty okay. much an eight week designation. Yep. And then they have to decide whether, you know, to bring them back or not. Right now they're trying to figure out who is going to be more important. Uh, you know, and, and, and in my eyes to me, Trevor Davis offers more on the special teams aspect of it, which is where they're really weak right now. So I think the, the, the positives uh, with Trevor Davis outweigh Kumaro because they do have receivers as long as they're healthy, I should say. Right. They do have receivers that can fill in. Somebody told me that Kumaro like hurt himself in preseason like doing like a freaking celebration. Is that true? Yeah, he caught like uh, a sixty yard pass against the Steelers. And he he I don't remember if he flipped into the end zone if he did like a somersault. Uh but I when think he, he came, might have, yeah. When he came down, right, Dakota, when he came down, he let on it on his shoulder. shoulder. Jesus and, uh, fucking Christ. That's the just, story of this team. Just <laughs> leading the preseason my in yards, God. too. Right, right. Oh, my word. Right. I'm sure when coaches see that, they got to be just thrilled, you know? <laughs> won't Good do that Lord. again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't remember anything about Kumaro. I know a little bit about Davis, but nothing about Kumaro. Um, I'll tell you what, though. That pass to, um, was it St. Brown? That sideline back shoulder. Oh yeah. Uh, oh my God. That that well, the catch, the pass, and the catch though. I I don't know if any other quarterback can make that throw, but that catch, that was a fantastic catch, and that was just a was it? I, I think it was on the game winning drive when he made that. Yes, it was. But and that I, was St. Brown. I mean, you got to have a lot of trust to throw that ball. That might have been on third down or something, but uh, that was a beautiful throw and catch. My goodness. And you got to have good hands to make that catch. Oh, yeah. I think back to the D- Dakota's point, you know, that he does show a lot of promise. He sure does. Mm-hmm. Because right there, the talent with his hands is mm-hmm. quite phenomenal. So, yeah. And this MVS is that Martavi, the Martavius Valdez Scantling. I'm probably butchering his name, but he <laughs> appears to. Yeah. Close he, enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really. I'll call it. They call him MVS. I'll just call him MVS. Yeah, there you go. Um, there you go. Apparently, he's. He's quite the speedster. I don't know anything about him, but he's he's really fast. Yeah, he came out of South Florida. They drafted him in the fifth round. He ran like a four three seven in the forty in the in the mm-hmm. combine. So the guy's got straight line speed, and he's he's got good game day speed as well. That's what he's shown thus far. So you know, I think talent wise at the receiver position, I know we came into the year thinking, man, we need more veterans. We need more talent here, but the talent, I, I think it's there. We're starting to see glimpses of it. Yeah, it's just young talent, right? Young, inexperienced mm-hmm. talent that just needs game reps, and they'll get better. You know, they truly will. And who? You know, I think they they still deserve game reps too, even with Cobb and, and Allison coming back. I, I I don't know. I just feel like they, you know, you got to get them reps early on, so that way next year, you know, they're they're experienced. They know what they're doing. Right. Right. Good point. I, you know, I like Cobb, but Cobb's past is he's got an overinflated contract. Oh, majorly. He's, and he's lost. He's never really had a step, but he's always been pretty quick, I guess. But I can't see him for the long haul. I, I like Cobb. Um, I've never really loved Cobb. I like him, but. Man. Good veteran guy. Just, you know, yeah. can't really produce anymore. And I mean, pff, they need somebody who can, right? Um, right. And who, right. Are the, who are the tight ends on the roster? So you got Jimmy Graham. Who are the other tight ends on the roster? Uh, Mercedes Lewis, uh, Lance Kendricks, and Robert Toynian, uh, undrafted rookie f- free agent. Or undrafted rookie, I should say. Mercedes Lewis. What the heck is he doing? Uh, he's blocking a lot. That that was always his specialty when he was with Jacksonville. Um, mm-hmm. He's uh, Many uh, prognosticators and NFL pundits have all said that he's the best blocking tight end in the league. And uh, he really hasn't been on the field enough to to show that quite yet. Um, but last game he played 22 snaps. It was the most snaps he's played this year thus far. Um, and I, when I went back to watch the game again, he was blocking a heck of a lot. Uh, so they see value in the fact that he can, he can block and he can bring some value in the run game, you know, which I hopefully Mm -hmm. as we get to the second half here, they, they start to incorporate that more into their game plan. And Mercedes Lewis is seeing more opportunities to get on the field. And the good thing about Mercedes is he's like 6'7", 275. He's yeah, a he's big, huge dude. You think about, you know, play action in the red zone. He should be an automatic weapon in the end zone. Yeah. 
Um, Kendrick's looks like a freaking pile of shit, to be honest. But he never really did me. produce for for us. I really don't think there's much of a need for him on the team right now, to be honest. And yeah. every time he's he's had an opportunity to do anything, looks like he's messed it up, to be honest. <laughs> he hasn't done much of catching the ball or even doing good blocking. But he he went to Wisconsin, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I got a little bit of time left, but um I guess, you know, coming out of the bye, what do you guys think? What do you, what are what are the realistic projections? Go ahead, Dakota. Oh man, it, it's tough. I seen something on the internet today that uh predicted a, a ten five and one finish, which you know, if we could get to that, I think we'd all be pretty happy. Um you know, I think our best chance is, you know, cranking out nine nine wins and somehow trying to slip in the playoffs. I just don't really see it happening. Um, you know, I will say, though, if they come out and get a win versus the Rams and or the Patriots win one of those games, you know, I think we got something to be excited about. So we'll have to see. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I, I I think this game is kind of a trap game for the Rams. Uh, they're, they're 7-0. They're coming off of, you know, a big win against the 49ers as well as we are. Uh, you know they're flying high. They're they're a team that's waiting to be knocked down a peg or two. And I think this offense is the perfect offense that can knock them down. Uh, so don't be surprised if if we come out of this game victorious. I can definitely see that happening. Uh, I don't think it's likely, but I, I have hopes I could, that I could see it happening too. I mean, they did give up 31 points to the, the Seahawks, which you know is kind of impressive too. I mean, I think our offense is, is better than the Seahawks, so. It could be done. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, Do you know what the Packers' record is against winning teams on the road? Under 500. Two, <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> two and then since since like 2012, I think it is, or maybe before that. Do you know what it is? I uh, know. So that's six. Oh, go ahead. It's two and eighteen. Wow. Yeah. Think about that, that. That seems right. That seems right. They have not beat good quality teams on the road. And as of lately, they have not beaten good quality teams at home either. So, you know, they've, they've, they've over the years, since I would say 2015, 16, they've beat the teams that they should have, but haven't beaten the teams that could, you know, um, you know, I guess classify them as championship caliber, you know, like a, a signature victory, like we had in 2014 when we beat the the Patriots here at Lambeau. So this is where, you know, this Ram uh, game is, is quite large in, in retrospect uh, in many ways because, you know, if we do win this game, let's say we do, we come out 4-2-1 and one, and things are looking pretty. And I, I told you guys in the last episode, if we come out of this this five-game stretch here as 2-3, or excuse me, 2-3, uh, and three, I'll be happy, you know. So that's my take on it. As far as the season goes, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm on Dakota's uh, side here. I... I think they're going to be on the fringe of the, as a playoff team. Um, I don't see them winning uh, the NFC North. Minnesota is going to is going to get themselves out of their doldrums, and they're going to start exactly. uh, playing some good football here. They should get at least eleven wins, I would say minimum. Um, and for us, eleven wins is just not. I don't see that as uh, as a possibility unless just everything goes well. But I see them too, like a nine and six and mm-hmm. one type record. Um, it, but it could it could very well be a ten and five and one, but uh, they have to improve a lot um, on both sides of the ball to get there. Uh, they have to cut down on their penalties. Uh, they have to um, these stupid stupid uh, penalties like Tony Brown has committed. Oh man, uh, you know those have their to. Their special teams are horrific, right? And Ron right. Zook is a pile of shit. You can mark me down officially <laughs> on that. He's terrible. He's <laughs> a dumb hire. Um, well, just so you know, we are last in the league in punt returns. Averaging I believe it. 4.9 yards per I mean, return. Is, is Tremont Williams a legitimate threat as a punt returner? Oh, my anymore? God. Come on. No. You know what that reminds me of uh, when, when Tremont Williams doing that? I remember um, it was Favre's first game back at Lambeau as a Viking. With the Vi- uh, Yeah, and they were loaded. They had him. They had Percy Harvin. They had uh, Adrian Peterson. You know, they were loaded up team. And the Packers, um, it was Rogers' second season, and they, they had some good players, but they had freaking Percy Harvin returning kicks, right? Mm-hmm. And Percy Harvin was, 
damn good. He was, this was like early in his career. Mm -hmm. And the Packers had like an ancient Amon Green returning kicks. <laughs> I'm just like they, they don't yeah. even it's like they didn't even care they've never put any teams. emphasis on that position really other than yeah. Trevor Davis that, yeah. that's a great point Dakota great point and, and I mean is Trevor Davis right it's just they're like they're just hoping and praying so to speak mm -hmm. I don't know but so last thing or last question I'll ask if the Packers eke into the playoffs and manage to win a game but then get out uh, d does McCarthy keep his job? Yes. I would probably agree with that. That won't be my choice, but I, I think he does. I don't even know what his contract looks like. What does his contract look like? He signed an extension this off season. Uh, so he's this off season. Yes. Oh, for Christ's sake. So he has another year uh, next year. Let's um, face it. He's forever extended. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, now, if they miss the playoffs completely, as he can't. I think he would be. Yep. I agree. I'm I mean, the they fired everyone else last year. I, I mean, I, I think he would be. When you say they fired everyone else last year, you might have to keep me. I think it, they, they fired, uh, well, they let go of Dom Capers. I think it was yep. like three or four assistant coaches, and uh, obviously with Ted Thompson. So, I mean, it really only leaves Mike McCarthy as the original one there. Yeah. And he brought in, I remember he brought in uh, Philbin. He's like, here's my new coordinator, Philbin. Same guy he had from whatever year. He's got to get freaking, he's got to get up to speed and get younger and more dynamic. Right. I mean, I, sh do I like Philbin? Sure. But is he the answer? Come on. I mean, that just reeks of nepotism or I don't even know. It's just, <laughs> it, it, it is not, it was not, you know what I mean? It was like a buddy, buddy hire, you know? Um, I don't know. Well, when times are tough, who are you going to hire? You're going to hire guys you're comfortable with, and that's what McCarthy went into the offseason with. So can you sense that McCarthy is feeling, feeling a little bit of the heat here? I think you can because he went out and signed probably the best defensive coordinator that he had a connection with, and he brought back an offensive coordinator that was an offensive coordinator back in the day here. So, you know, when you're in trouble, you, you, you relish and you embrace uh, commonalities. and. Yeah. Philbin brought that. So, yeah. What do you guys think of Petten? I don't know enough about him, but I mean, he, what do you think? I mean, his second half adjustments have been really good. It's just some of the games, I don't know if it's the scheme we're running or if the, just our safeties are that bad, but you know, I, I just, he just haven't figured it talent. out. He doesn't have any right. talent to me to work with. Every, you know, I hate to say it. And it's <clears> like Clay, Clay Matthews, his first three or four years, man, he was a, he was just a, a terror. He was a Von Miller, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But his yeah. last five years, he has just been. Pain, I mean, I dare say painful to watch. <laughs> he does nothing. Yeah. You know, he's, I don't know. But uh, the reason I bring up Petten, it's like, um, why Why do these guys sit up in a booth? Oh, I've, that would... I've, I've thought about that. I mean, I, what does it really mean? I don't know, but I've just thought about it. It's like, I don't get it, to be honest. If, if you're a guy like Don Capers, I understand it because he's a highly analytical guy. And... From his perspective, his opinion, uh, being up in the booth gives you a, a broad spectrum. It gives you the whole picture. Where when you're on the field, you're only seeing like a microscopic uh, right. picture. So, you know, does is that the way to go? I don't know. I mean, for me, if I was a defensive coordinator, I want to be in the field because if guys are not doing their job, I want to freaking rile them up and yes. sit them yeah, down right. and say, you know what? Whoever, get in the game. He's out, you know. Um, I, you know, that's the one thing with the accountability thing that Mike Patton talked about as he, as he came in and was introducing himself. The accountability does not happen when you're up in the booth. The accountability yep. happens when you're on the field. Exactly. Yeah. And I, so I, I may be um, overreacting to that, but I've, I've just often thought about it too because it was just, I wonder, you know, I just kind of wonder, you know, what does that mean? I mean, to your point, Jeremy, it's like when you're, you know, 500 yards away from your defense on game day. What is it to do? I just don't know, you know, right. I just don't know. Th this, this defense lacks talent. Like we've all talked about, uh, you know, I've been on the safety since game one. Uh, right. I sounds like, sounds like Dakota has been too, um, you know, in their pass rush, uh, even though their statistics say that their pass rush is, is, is good. Uh, I would disagree in that respect because I agree. it's not consistent, you know, um, so 
if you're good on the front end and you're good on the back end, you're going to have a pretty damn good defense. And they're, to me, they're below average on the front end and the back end. Like I've said last time, the, the safeties are your, are your police force. You know, they're the protectors. They protect teams from, you know, scoring touchdowns. You know, they, if they break the first two quadrants of the defense, you hope the safeties can take uh, and knock them out. But also too, it starts up at a front, you know, teams that are stout, up front, whether it's in the offensive line or defensive line, if you can control the line of scrimmage, you're going to be highly successful. And right now they don't have the talent overall uh, besides Kenny Clark to um, win battles up front and be a, a force where everything is one in the trenches. I What's agree. Guys, this thoughts of moving one of our cornerbacks back to safety. I mean, if you look at our corners, you know, we've got quite a few corners on the roster. If, if they're all healthy, I mean, I seen that article about, but maybe Kevin King back at at safety. Um, I mean, even maybe a Tremont Williams, since he doesn't have the speed really to keep up anymore. What's your guys' thoughts? I, I think Tremont Williams would make a good safety, just for the fact that he he reminds me a lot of Charles Woodson. You know, where right he, he was a good player his whole career, and towards the end, obviously, you know, the legs kind of started to give out, and 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 you put him back there, and he can still be a, a really good player. Uh, Kevin King does not make sense to me at all. Uh, he's he's a cornerback. He's a ball hawk. Um, he's a guy that needs to have his hands on receivers. That doesn't make any sense to me. But Termon Williams, definitely. Uh, I'd agree with you there. That's kind of what I was thinking as well. I mean, because you have Josh Jackson who plays the nickel dime, and he should be on the field to me uh, at least 60% of the downs. Yeah, he's exciting. Know? Right. He's a playmaker, which, as we all know, they don't have enough playmakers. So you got to get jobs. You know, how do you maximize the 11 guys that are going to get the most or they're going to give you the most? And to me, I think Tremont Williams pushing him back to safety, knocking Kentrell Bryce out of there, and then getting J- uh, Jackson in uh, the dime is going to increase the chances that this defense uh, is going to get more turnovers and more plays in the ball. So I think that's how you got to do it. Uh, I'm not a fan of Ha Ha Clinton Dix either. Well, <laughs> but, but they're talking but, about resigning him. Did you hear about this? Really? Yeah. yeah I've heard rumors that Gudikins is going to resign him. I mean, that guy that. isn't worth top tier money. I hope they don't break He's the bank on him, dude. too. Ha Ha is a piece of shit. How many, <laughs> how many, <laughs> let me ask you guys how many interceptions have you seen him get that he had to work for that weren't thrown right to him or that were tipped into his hands? I mean, 90% of them haven't been, you know, him making a play. The three this year were exactly like you just defined. They were thrown right to him, you know. So if you he's a that- he's a guy to be honest. Like for every one great play he makes, he's given up three bad ones. I mean, yeah. He doesn't get as burnt as obvious as Kentrell Bryce does in coverage, but he certainly does not close his zones like he should. I mean, all those red zone touchdowns. Who do you see right behind the receiver? There's Clint Dix. I don't know what he's doing, yeah. but there he is. Yeah. Uh, Dakota, when you um, check our page, uh, scroll down. I, I, I posted a clip of the Detroit game uh, when they scored the touchdown before halftime. Yeah. Uh, watch that clip and and tell me uh, what he was doing on that one. <laughs> I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to I'm get. Sure, it. I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> no, it was it was really. I mean, getting to your point of he just doesn't have the instincts. I don't think uh, to to be a safety, uh, at least a, a top 10 safety in this league. So no. it'd be crazy to go out and sign him for anything more than $5 million a year. It'd be right. really crazy. I'm yeah. with you. Yeah. I don't know. Ugh. Now my brother apparently left his voicemail. Hey guys, absolute po- uh, Packer podcast. This is Ben, uh, Andy's brother. And I've got a question I'd like him to answer. And that is, what will it take for Andy to actually say something positive about the Packers? Would it take a win over the Patriots on the road, or would it take more? All right. Look forward to hearing the answer. Thanks. Bye. And my brother has called me Negative Nancy for the better part of my whole life, and he doesn't like how I've been so negative about the Packers and what can I do to become positive. And I would say this gets a little more spiritual, but he's right about much of this. I've been very, very negative about them in the past. And, you know, we can be pretty critical about the Packers on the show. But um, it kind of goes back to 
um, I call it the New England kind of model. And what I what I don't like about the Packers, and I haven't liked about them probably since 2012, I should say, is that, and I made a brief comment on it, comment on it earlier, is that they're happy with being competitive. I think there's a fair amount of NFL teams out there that are fine with being competitive. Mm-hmm. They don't, but they're, they don't want to take the jump to being built to win. They're built to be competitive. If you're built to win, you're taking a risk because sure, you know, you may, you may pile up a lot of talent for a short run and then you'll be bad for a while, but and there's a risk in that, but everything's really a risk. And if you have, an all-time great player. So think about a Tom Brady. That's kind of why I say the Bill Belichick model, the Patriots. If you have a Tom Brady or you have an Aaron Rodgers, you bet your ass you better build your team to win and not just be competitive. Uh, I mean, Brady's, what, 40, 41? And, you know, they're building to win around him even now. They're not rebuilding around him now. They're building to win. And the Packers, is Aaron Rodgers, I think, is 34. Um. You know, he may not be, you know, spring chicken anymore, but as you guys can see, basically his whole career, they've been fine with just being competitive. I think the first two or three years that he was a starter, we got fooled into thinking, oh, they're going to build this great team around him. Mm-hmm. And they had, a, they had a few good players, but they, they basically were like, okay, we'll be competitive and we'll let Rodgers just carry it. So that's the problem I have with it. And also he's my brother, so he can just, you know, whenever he's stupid, he piss on him. <laughs> well, well, you know, I'm not. He's not my brother, so I, I, I will, I'll, I'll gladly answer that question. Uh, you were just talking about when you know the first three years of Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, tenure here in Green Bay, he brought a lot of hope here, and he, and he got us to the, he got us to the promised land, won us the Super Bowl. Let's go back to 2010 when we won that thing. What was everybody? saying about the Packers that man the next however many years they're going to be a Super Bowl contender you know yeah. they're going to be right. in it every single year and what happened we we since 2010 when we won we've been in two NFC championships and that's it we haven't been to the Super Bowl so mm-hmm. you know has the was the was the precedent set back when we won the Super Bowl with with all this you know high hopes that were going on you betcha. And I fell for it. You know, I was like, man, oh, I did too. This team is going to be phenomenal. If we don't get two more Super Bowls, uh, you know, in the next five years, I, it's it, to me, it's, it's a broke deal, you know? Um, so I guess to answer your question, Ben, I mean, that's how I look at it is, you know, when, when you win a Super Bowl, you, you're coming off of extreme high euphoric hopes. And from that point, the euphoria just kind of slowly melted away and slowly melted away. And we all got impatient with it, mm-hmm. you know? So don't blame us for being impatient. We just want to see you guys <laughs> win a damn Super Bowl for crying out loud, you know? So oh, well, it's yes. not like it hasn't been done either. I mean, look at new England. I mean, they're in it every other year. You know, I, I think we kind of hold ourselves to the same standards. I mean, we have a quarterback, our quarterback's better than Tom Brady. You know, I'll yep. say that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good point. I agree. Good point. Um, now, I would say that, you know, New England is the exception to the rule without without question, because um, if ever if you could put that, you know, stuff in a in a bottle and, and drink it, I mean, everybody would have it. So, <laughs> so Belichick, Belichick is an all time great coach. But, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, there aren't many teams that can say that. So I think, yeah, over the over time, I found myself getting more and more negative. Um, just because, like you said, Jeremy, it's like things that you thought were ordained. Like, man, we're going to go to at least three more Super Bowls. Look how talented this guy. And they wouldn't do it. And then you start to see what's going on around the team and how it's being built and how certain things are being treated. And you're just like, what the hell? So, I don't right. Know. Right. Didn't yeah. agree more. Yep. Yipper. Well, should we end it here, folks? I think so. I'm getting tired. My uh, yeah. my rehab, you know, I weigh only weigh like 163 pounds. I run out pretty quick. I got to get some lbs on my body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What what the score prediction uh, on one of the closing notes? What do you guys got? The Rams. Yeah, you bet. Well, I'm gonna say 35-21 Rams. 
Okay. I'm going to say 44-31 Rams. Ooh. You know, I, I actually think, I don't know, call me optimistic, but I think the Packers can uh, actually win this one. I'd say the Packers win this 40-31. to 31. Nice. Ooh, that would be I nice. do like that. Nice. It, that would yeah, be I awesome. just think the offense is going to click. I just, uh, I mean, if, if they're going to do it, it's it's now after the bye week, and if they're not going to do it, you know, that's kind of the season. So, yeah. all or nothing, basically. Do you know? Rem- do you know what this actually reminds me of? This particular game. Do you, I think it was 2012 when the Packers start off the season like two and three, their usual slow start, the and they were they yep, they went into the Texans who were like undefeated, mm-hmm. and they blew them the hell out at their. At their stadium, it was like what was it like forty four to like it was forty four to like fourteen or something. And Rogers yeah. threw six touchdown passes. I just kind of feel I have you know it's it's yeah. it's either going to happen or it's not. So yeah, kind of well, nothing. Well, Dakota, if they win, you're our you're our good luck bear. Yeah. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt, so. man. <laughs> no doubt. I like well, the optimism. Yeah. Um, I want to appreciate, or I just want to say, I, I appreciate you coming on, Dakota. And, yeah, and thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, yeah, this is fantastic. Any anytime you hear about somebody who who loves the way you're doing something and is that you know kind of passionate about um, something that's you know we kind of a homegrown little thing here. We're not a yeah right. a huge thing. We just do it because we like it and we like our team and it's, and it's just kind of fun to do. We're not I mean, sponsored is, by anybody or <laughs> anything. This like is. That. Uh, I mean, I've been looking at, you know at, for podcast. Uh, I'm an avid gym goer, so you know when I'm doing cardio every day, I, you know I've heard every song, I've heard your music. I love the Packers. I want to hear you know podcasts on the Packers, and I tell you there there's not there's not a lot of good podcasts out there. This is the one that I've found. I enjoy. I look forward to every episode that comes out because I can relate to you guys. Um, nice. Yeah, re- really enjoy it. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. Yeah. I really appreciate you guys do that. Great job. Yeah. Appreciate it. That's awesome, Dakota. I, I, we, we appreciate that so much, and uh, we oh, hope gosh. more people are are like Dakota and come out and and uh, want to be a part of this thing. Um, you can always leave a voicemail with us. You can always call us up uh, and and leave a question. Uh, our number is five zero eight five three five five four six eight, and what we'll do is we'll play it live on the show, um, and we'll answer it and whatever you need, we'll give it to you. So uh, please do that. Um, we want more fan interaction here because yep. uh, we're, we're, we're fans too. We're just like you guys. So no doubt, no doubt. Come on and, and, and jump on board and let's let's uh, have some fun. Great. Could not say it any better. Well said, bud. All righty. With that, go back, go. Let's hope for podcast, podcast. Go back, go. All righty. I know, right?